One of the problems that faces a lot of modern video game controllers is a feature, let's call it, called stick drift. It sucks. It's one of those things, it first came out with the Nintendo Switch, and it call, was called Joy-Con Drift, but since then, other manufacturers' controllers have been prone to it too. My launch day PS5, playing AEW All Elite Fight Forever behind me, my launch day controller, the left stick, drifts terribly. It is unusable. I've bought a couple more since then so I can continue to play, but it just sucks in so many different ways. Well, Sony has tried to address their issue with a very premium controller. This is the DualSense Edge wireless controller, and this ain't cheap. It runs about $200. That's what I paid for it here myself at our local GameStop store. And it promises not only to solve stick drift issues, but if they ever happen to happen to you, you can switch out the stick modules. Let's unbox this, let's see how it comes out of the box, and let's do some testing with it. So here we have the DualSense Edge wireless controller for the PS5. Pretty clean, straightforward box and everything on here. Definitely inspired by the looks of the original DualSense controller. Just have a look at the controller on the side there. Nothing on that side, on the back. Perfect your gameplay. Get an edge in custom game, or get an edge in gameplay by creating your own custom controls to fit your play style. Ultra customizable controls, mappable back buttons, dual sense features built right in, and replaceable stick modules. So let's go ahead. We're going to peel off the tape or cut the tape here. We're going to dive in to take a look at what this all has to offer. I have to say, kind of a heavy box. I was not expecting it to be quite so heavy. You do have the PlayStation branding. Reminds me a lot of the PlayStation Mini Classic. Uh, it feels like it's got a case in here set of instructions and that's about it so let's take a look at what we got yes it does come with the case i have to admit i was not expecting that but for 200 bucks i'm glad to see it kind of a hard shell too ah, there it is and then just for comparison i do have my launch day dual sense controller so as you can see they've inverted some of the colors the d-pad went from white to black on here the touchpad white to black as well I uh, still have black here on the shroud around the face of it too. The triangle square cross and circle buttons also inverted colors. And then you do have, I think these are tension adjusters. So R, L, release. This does feel like this is heavier. Or this feels heavier than this. So no, oh, those are actual function buttons on there. On the top does have USB-C for charging. L1 and L2 triggers, they look to be similar in size but there's a little bit of texturing here on these i mean feels like a dual sense controller so that's a good thing i guess so here's a few interesting tidbits out of the manual so there is a connector hook uh or connector housing hook and that's this guy here and basically what you do is you run your usb-c cable in and then it actually not permanently but more directly attaches to the usb-c cable so that uh, when you throw it, when you get angry, it doesn't pop off. Uh, stick cap, use the standard caps to switch them out with one of the other caps, which would be like those there. Uh, stick module, you can pop those right out to replace those if you do have drifting issues. L2, R2 stop slider, so that's, you can adjust the stroke. That's what it is, not tension. Back buttons, there's two programmable back buttons on this. And then you do get the controller, a USB braided cable, the carry case, the connector housing, an instruction manual, which I'm looking at now, high dome caps, standard caps, and low dome caps, and then two back button, uh, either buttons or levers if you prefer. And it has a spelling out here of everything else as you would expect. Interesting, you can actually store an extra stick module right here in the case, which is good to see. now. I want to see how easy this is to pop off. So release, there's a slide right here which says release, so we are going to slide that. That face cover comes right off. Now this is slightly different than what the uh, regular DualSense controller has. And then does this just slide out or pull that up? Oh dude, that's so nice. Okay, that is brilliant. Just flip up the lever, slide that out. You need a new one, slide it in. Awesome. Now, 
would love to see Hall Effect sensors. There's no indication that these are, but the fact that you can change out the sticks that easily, that's a win. So what we're gonna do, we are going to go ahead, we're gonna put it back together here when hopefully not screw it up. Are we back here? Here we are. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna charge this up. And the nice thing, it does have the same connector port on the bottom as what the dual sense controller has, the standard one. So what's nice is our KMD controller that we, or our KMD controller charger that we have that we love, I can actually set this on there to charge it and have it charge. I like that. So we've got to do a couple of things here before we can actually get through and do some testing. First and foremost, I'm a little thirsty. This is not a sponsored post or anything. I'm just glad to know that Menards now carries Black Bear Soda. This is something straight out of my youth, and I'm glad, too, that Sprecher, also not a sponsored post or anything like that, but hey, Sprecher, if you want to do something, talk to me. I love their Cherry Cola. Sprecher has gone ahead, and they've gotten the rights to Black Bear, so bottoms up. So good. Next thing we need to do is we actually need to pair our controller now to our system and I've just got a USB-C cable here plugged in and then plugged into the system there we go dual sense edge controller device software there is an update so let's go ahead and basically the difference was I just held the PlayStation button down for a few seconds we'll do the update real quick I do like the texturing on the triggers I've got to say I, I didn't know what I was gonna think about that I, I like it Restarting our DualSense Edge controller. Let's get started. I didn't even know this was part of it, so let's learn together. And I am going to go ahead and disconnect the cable here. Let's see, customizable back buttons and L2, L, R, stop. Okay, saw that. Function buttons for quick access and then the replaceable stick, saw those. Change your button assignments according to your preferences. So you can remap the buttons, that's nice. Adjust the input sensitivity of your stick, that's nice too. Set the input range for your controller. Oh, dead band adjustment, basically. Create and switch between custom profiles. Quick access the function button. Use the function button under the left or right stick to access your favorite controls and profiles. Press and hold to see your shortcuts. Okay, that's neat. Start setting up your controller by creating a custom profile. I, I like the default profile. I don't have a whole lot to, to change. So... We're gonna back out of here, and we're gonna try some NASCAR Heat 5 because I wanna try the triggers in a racing game. All right, so we are set up in the pits. Now, one thing I am gonna do, um, the one thing I've noticed on the NASCAR games is the fact that the brakes are super sensitive. I'm gonna limit the travel on the, uh, on the brake. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do some practice real quick. And for those who are familiar with the NASCAR series, this is Watkins Glen Motor Speedway. Ooh, drifted a little bit off the track there. So interesting, the fact that it still functions like the full length of the brake pedal on the left trigger, but it doesn't seem like it's locking up like it normally would, which is a good thing. Up through the S as we go. Much better through the bus stop chicane. Grab the rumble strip just a little bit on exit at each corner. Uh, I'll say for a driving game, this is actually feeling pretty good. Much better line through the S's that time. Much better exit coming out of that onto the back straightaway. Oh, yeah. Went way wide out of that. Good line there, getting set up on the front straightaway. Oh yeah, much better lap this time. Not in the 110s, but getting faster. Okay, we are gonna exit out of this, go home. So that works well. Let's try beat em up. Let's try uh, Shredder's Revenge, and I'm gonna actually go full travel on the left rear stick to L2. This is such a great game. If you love Turtles in Time, this is a game that you have to play. I mean, this is even just the standard Turtle arcade games. This is a game that you just, it's such a love letter to that. Uh, now using the D-pad instead of just the analog stick, which is terrific. Oh, this is great. So does it feel like a $200 difference? No, uh, I will tell you that much right now. Does it feel really good? Absolutely. Button presses feel great. 
There we go, get them all with the super attack. Yeah, this is phenomenal. Now, and and why I say, you know, is it does it feel like $200 better? Right now, it would not. Um, but I'll tell you where the benefit definitely for me comes from is the fact that in the event that I do get stick drift, I can replace the sticks pretty easily. Yeah, D-pad feels great for this. We're going to dive into some Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart because this game is just amazing. I love this game so much. This, to me, is reason enough to own a PS5. Yes, this is a system seller to me. I love the adaptive triggers on this because you actually get a click when you, um, you know, pull the trigger fully. Button presses are great again. I mean, not that I expected a whole lot. Wave one, no challenge, but uh, yeah, it's going to get harder for sure. Yeah, once again, I mean, even just zooming in with the, uh, you know, with the L trigger is fantastic. Got him! I think I'm now up to like six times that I've beaten this. And no, I have not 100%ed it, as you saw from the, uh, the intro screen. But I'm just having fun with it. This is such... A, it's a great story. That's the best thing. It's funny. It's irreverent. I love the weapons. You know, the characters. I wish that Mr. Zircon had more of a, um, an impact on the game. Uh, you have Mrs. Zircon. Yeah, the analog sticks, I will say, feel great, too, for, you know, especially for a shooter like this. And it's not a first-person shooter, clearly. It's a third-person shooter, but it's one of those where, oh, I'm out of ammo. I need to talk less and fight more. Why are you here? Powerful. Beautiful. Victory! Yes! We collected lots of bolts and killed lots of baddies. So we're going to finish up with some Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. This was actually originally released for the PlayStation 3. Now, I do have the PlayStation Plus service. This is not a game you can download. You have to play it off the cloud. So let's see how good, bad, or indifferent it is here. I, I know they say, oh, it's lag-free. It works wonderfully. I have never found it to be the best experience myself. Oh, this looks great. Okay, I can pull off all the moves. Got him three times with three Hadoukens. Now, I will say I was also using the D-pad for most of that. And I have switched to the analog stick now. Now, there... I'm less worried that he beat me because I was actually trying to pull off the dragon uppercut. Let's finish it off with some Miles Morales here, although I think I may have said let's finish it off with some Street Fighter. Um, so what do I think overall? Um, not worth $200. I will say that first and foremost. Uh, it does feel heavier in the hand. The overall gameplay experience while you're using it, I mean, I'm not one that likes programmable buttons. I just don't use them. Um, these are decent enough. Uh, but not something I think that I would use on a regular basis. Um, everything seems to be, you know, pretty much as it was on the original DualSense controller, but now it's one of those where I can quickly and easily change the sticks if I need to. Um, it feels accurate. It feels good in the hands. I, I can't say that it doesn't. But I'm also not one of those that, like, I don't need an Elite controller. I, I wish that... Like, give me, give me the stick functionality, or, or at least the ability to swap out sticks with a, um, uh, you know, with a standard dual sense controller. And it has been a while since I've played this, so, so yeah, I'd say overall my experience with this pretty pleasant. I mean, this, I, I like how it worked. I'm looking at this more as something. It's future proofing my gameplay so that I don't have to spend, hopefully, well, no, I, the replacement sticks are only like 20 bucks from what I've seen, so, you know, versus spending 60 or 70 to buy a whole new controller, which I've actually had to do. I love the fact that it is compatible with existing chargers for the other DualSense controllers. Um, the you know, adjustable stick throws were nice on racing games. You know, again, I tend to be a little bit heavier on brakes, so being able to limit that, you know, so I'm only getting that much travel versus like all the travel there. Um, 
I like that. I like that quite a bit. Um, above and beyond that, it's a DualSense controller. It's an expensive DualSense controller, but it is a DualSense controller. Now, if you want to pick one of these up, I'll have a link down below where you can do so through our Amazon affiliate store, where if you buy one through there, it actually does help support the channel. Um, unfortunately, no discounts. Sorry about that. Um, and if you want to check out some of the other videos that we've done on the PS5, I'll have them linked for you right here where we've done other charger reviews, stand reviews, and more. Because this, quite frankly, this is my go-to system right now.